With the recent evacuation order being lifted in the village of East Palestine, many are looking to regroup, both in their personal and professional lives. Many appreciating a home cooked meal and their own beds a lot more this week. I'm feeling great. Got some good sleep last night, a nice hot shower. Say they'll change my clothes finally. But another question, what about those businesses that had to shut their doors? Hugar says he's hoping to see some local shops open up by the end of the week. Because usually I go down to the one restaurant in the morning and get breakfast. Well, they're not open today. Tom's Tires is, but owner Harry Jones said there were a lot of initial concerns. We keep booked out about three to four days ahead of time. So we had full schedules for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, so that's a lot of business lost. You know, I have employees that's you know I'm paying wages for and we're not here. It's not their fault that they can't come to work. So, you know, I'm covering wages and I'm not bringing anything in. Jones says that isn't his only worry. The customers that, you know, were coming from out of town because we do pull from our tri-state area, you know, are they coming back now? While they can't get those days back, they're looking to move forward. Our phone has been ringing a lot today, so a lot of rescheduling, getting people back in, trying to accommodate people the best we can. Now residents staying positive. You think your community can come back from this? Easily. Reporting from East Palestine, Chloe Mesagaitis, back to you. Right here at Franciscan University of Steubenville, they're taking a leap of faith, which is having students give up their normal smartphones for dumbed down light phones in order to unplug. The dumb phones allow you to call, text, and listen to podcasts, but it's not forced. This is part of their new Unplug Scholarship, which awards 30 students with financial assistance if they are able to give up using a smartphone for their college career. We're tethered to technology in a way that, you know, I feel like the behavior is so compulsive. They're looking to change that. Freshman Columban Honan is one of those students unplugging from that new normal. I felt like something that was weighing on me and something that I knew I, I couldn't keep up, especially with the lifestyle of a student. Um, a smartphone is just a huge distraction. According to a Pew Research study, 96% of people ages 18 to 29 have a smartphone, but they bring on other problems. Being on social media gave me a lot of stress and anxiety. Honan believes this isn't uncommon. Students like Mary Sarnin agree and say this helped her be able to connect not virtually, but face to face. Simplicity is such a good thing and uh, giving up my iPhone has helped me be a lot more intentional um, in keeping up relationships um, and being present to my daily tasks. The program is solely based on the honor system and with 30 kids participating for a scholarship, another 50 are in it just for their well-being and it's making a huge difference. You know, you could hear in their voices, in their stories, you know, in the, their faithfulness to showing up um, to these meetings um, that, you know, not only are they, are they doing it, but, you know, they're thriving. So just take a leap of faith and, and get a phone that's not holding you back. And with the growing success of the Unplugged Scholarship, the university hopes that they can add on to this and get some future donors in years to come. I am scared. I don't scare easily, but I am scared. I admit that. This is the scene between East Palestine High School and East Palestine Elementary School as many across Columbiana County and the Tri-State area work together to find solutions. Evacuees like Paul Cochran have been at the shelter since the day of the train derailment. He took me back to that day. My friends called me on the phone and said, look at your window. I look at the window and saw this, I mean, pitch black. Clouds, black smoke just rolling over and over like a bill of hay. The American Red Cross has transformed East Palestine's high school gym as a shelter for evacuees just like Cochrane. Volunteers say they've seen as many as 125 evacuees come through the shelter, but some still refusing to evacuate. It's going to continue on day by day. We won't close down until, you know, we're, we have to. We have to stay and help where we can. And while evacuees express their thanks to first responders and the Red Cross, many urging for answers from Norfolk Southern. An accident I can see, but there was just too much slop. But for the time being. I'm just trying to make a, a smile through this, you know. I don't feel like crying. I'm cried out. DeWine adds that him and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro have been in contact throughout the whole process. They add that this controlled release is the best option for the area. For now, reporting in East Palestine, Chloe Mesagaitis, News 9.